Gurus, uh, wir kommen in einem und in einem Fragens Video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case episode 14 of my figure gaming video series. This presentation provides detailed instructions for the creation of rivers and streams in a cork based modular terrain tile system. One way of creating realistic waterways is to gouge out away part of the cork tile. After trying many methods in the end, the best was using a router. This is an example of a small and low-cost router. While still expensive, an expensive item in my gaming tools, apart from the figure, is quite affordable. Always use protection for your eyes and be careful when using it. Select the correct router bit is important as well. This shows the bit that I use on my router. It's rounded and as wide as possible. One centimeter that was the widest I could find. This is set so it cuts into half of a single tile, perhaps three mil depth. Draw out your river on the tile, secure the tile to your workbench, use eye protection and route away. It's important to ensure the tile is well secured to a workbench. During the routing process, you do not want the tile to move. The area which will be routed is in blue. I found it's very important to make the river as clear and obvious as possible. As you're routing, you will only see a very small part of the tile and it's easy to make errors. By painting any river onto the tile, routing errors can be kept to a minimum. This shows the result after the routing has occurred. It will be messy, so don't do this in your living room. In this case, the river is 3 cm wide, which requires 3 passes of the router. A 1 cm wide stream only requires a single pass, and wider rivers require more passes. You will get a grooving effect, which can look good once you've completed your river. You'll end up with a lot of cork dust, which I think may be useful as flock on terrain. I've not tried this yet, and the blue flecks in it may well make it useless, but it's nonetheless an interesting idea. Here you'll see there is a bridge which crosses the river. One option is to cut out the river and then use wood putty to form the bridge, but I find this system much better. The other step is to use a wood chisel to smooth out the river base. This shows how deep the river is cut into the tile. In, most, in this case, it's almost one tile thick, which is 5 mil. This is the reason why you need two tiles stuck together, apart from the tile being a lot stronger. This is a close-up. Unfortunately, the focus close-up is not good, so it's hard to see the detail, but you can see how deep the river is in the tile. Once the river is prepared, you can now paint it with a thick coat of river blue paint. This colour will be visible under the silicon, so make sure the river colour is to your liking. You'll now need to flock the tile, and then when complete, spray with a watered-down solution of glue. This is in order to bond the loose flock to the tile. I neglected to photograph the tile before I filled in the stream, but before you get the silicon out, you'll need to tape up the ends. You need to make sure the silicon does not flow out and over the tile edge. I strongly recommend the use of a professional silicon dispensing gun. The silicon needs to be crystal clear. This may seem like a lot of silicon, but this only does four tiles, assuming simple three centimeter wide rivers. Make sure that when you cut the end of the silicon dispenser, you have a large hole. When you squeeze the silicon out, you want to avoid running it up and down the tile as this results in unusual grooving. The silicon should fill a one centimeter wide area, so you only need to run it up and down three times to fill in your three centimeter wide river. Once you've squeezed out the silicon, use a chisel to smooth down the silicon. This will take practice, but ideally you want a nice smooth surface. The tape at either end should be removed as soon as the silicon has hardened to the point it will not flow. I normally wait for 24 hours at the most. If you remove it after this, be very careful, otherwise you may rip the silicon out. Even when the silicon is semi-dry, you still have to be careful when you remove the tape. You may wish to place something at the base of your river before you fill it with silicon, such as small stones or flock or something to give it a bit more of a natural look. Sometimes you may get a bubbling effect. I'm uncertain why this occurs and I suspect me the way it may be the way I dry the silicon. But even with a bubbling effect, you still have your rivers. And so this concludes episode 14 of my figure gaming video series, in this case covering creating rivers in cork tiles. Denken Sie daran, immer verhüllen, Hamatlin zu kapfen.